all of you present here who remember and are here to celebrate a courageous, a fearless and a beautiful life that Gauri Lankesh leaves behind and the memories that we are here to commemorate. Reimagining India in authoritarian times. Let us step back for a moment and ask, what is India? Who is India? What makes up India? Because as of today, the very name India is under attack. Because this government doesn't like ourselves to be called Indians. They don't like the word India. And today for the G20 summit that's happening, an invite goes from the president of this country and the invite says, President Srimati Draupadi Murmu, Republic of Bharat. The name India is given to us by our constitution. Article 1 of the constitution clearly states we will be known as India and as Bharat and we are a union of states where small states and large states, where Hindi speaking states and states that speak in Malayalam or Tamil or Kannada will be treated as equals. And that identity is under threat. So I think before we reimagine, let us step back for a moment and understand where are we in our polity today? Where are we in our political struggles today? Where the name of this country and soon after that invite came, television channels went with breaking news. And the breaking news was that in the special session of parliament, the government is likely to bring a resolution that will submissively replace the name Bharat with India. And that is nothing short of changing the constitution of this country. The constitution very clearly states, we the people of India, hum Bharat ke lo. And it cannot be changed because one man is scared of an alliance. Because one man is scared of all his failures in the last nine years. And he has an issue with India today. I think before anything else, and I'm not going to get into what about re, I'm not going to get into we will have to call Reserve Bank of Bharat and things like that. I don't think this is a joking matter. I don't think this is funny anymore. I think a regime that thinks that they can change the constitution of this country because he cannot understand and he cannot appreciate his political opponents, there is something seriously wrong with India. There is something seriously wrong with this country and before reimagining it, let's wake up, smell the coffee and reconfigure our land. We cannot have a country where people one fine day get up and say they will change our names, our identities. I call my mother Amma. You may call her Mai. You may call her mother. You may call her with various names. Who has the audacity to change the names of their mothers? We call this country our motherland and nobody, absolutely no one should have the audacity to even think about changing our names. And that's what the present regime is doing. That's the reimagination that we need to talk about. Who is India? India is 140 crore people. Who is Bharat Mata? Kya hai Bharat Mata? Bharat Mata nadi hai, nale hai, parvat hai, ped hai, kya hai Bharat Mata? Bharat Mata are the sons and daughters of this country. People like you and me. People like us. We Indians are sons and daughters of this land and there is nobody more Bharat Mata than all of us. And today our identity is under threat and we cannot keep quiet. India belongs to the farmers. India belongs to the daily wage laborers. India belongs to students. India belongs to the young, to the old, to the women, to the marginalized. And India belongs to its minorities. India is not a country that can be staked claim by brute majoritarianism. And that's the reimagination that we will have to talk about. We are going through a time in our history and a time in our polity where you cannot be a mute spectator. And I will quote one of the Hindi poets from Hindi and other, I will translate it in English. Ramdhari Singh Dinkar, Jinko Rashtavi Kaha, or Aap Mese Kuch Logo Ne Unka Naam Suna Hoga. He very categorically said, Jo Tathast Hai Samay Likhega Unke Bhi Aparad. You can no longer be a mute spectator. You have to join this fight because this fight is for the country you and I call our identity, you and I call our mother, you and I call our home. And when India belongs to all of us, who are they to 
change our names? Who are they to change our identities? And what are they changing the identity to? To Bharat? Well, you know what? There was a man in this country, my leader, our leader actually, sir, who walked 4,000 kilometers from Kanyakumari to Kashmir in the Bharat Jodo Yatra. And he did that because he's resolved to keep this country united. He met strangers. He met the absolute bottom of the rung poor people. He met mechanics. He met truck drivers. He listened to them. He listened to their plight. And why did he have to walk? And I will tell you something very personally here. When he was walking, and anybody, some of you walked with him here, anybody could have gone and met him. Koi bhi jaakar unse mil sakta tha, kahi se bhi aakar mil sakta tha. And this thought did cross my mind that he's putting his life under grave risk. And for a man who has seen his father blown into pieces, who has seen his grandmother being shot 32 times, the fearlessness and the courage of his convictions made that man walk in the Bharat Jodo Yatra. And that's why I'm proud of calling Rahul Gandhi my leader. And that's the India I imagine. I imagine an India where one man is not going to do his monkey bath and the rest of the country is going to listen to it. I imagine an India where Kannada and Tamil and Malayalam will be as respected as a language as Hindi, my mother tongue. I imagine an India where women in Manipur will not be paraded naked. I imagine an India where media is not going to give cover firing. I imagine an India where the Prime Minister of this country is not going to wake up 78 days after that horrific video and only speak for 36 seconds in Manipur. It has been over 120 days. He has still not gone to a part of a country which we call home. That's the India I imagine. I imagine an India where people will be free of poverty. I imagine an India like Karnataka and that is where my hope comes from. And I'm not saying this because my chief minister is sitting here. I say this with conviction. Karnataka gives me hope. Because guess what? Before the Karnataka elections happened, Karnataka had become the head laboratory of the BJP and the RSS. From the hijab controversy to maligning couples who were in love to making people chant mantras at gunpoint, that is the head laboratory Karnataka had become. And good governance is what we promised and which is why we were voted back in. So I see a lot of hope. I see the reimagination in the people of this country. They taught the BJP, they taught an authoritarian regime a lesson and they voted them out of power. And we are not sitting on our laurels here. And I, and I congratulate my chief minister for walking the talk. We have implemented the five big poll promises from Agraya Lakshmi to Agraya Jyoti or the free bus service because that is what we promised people. We did not promise people to divide this country. We did not promise people that we are going to build uh, Bharat and not India. We believe in Bharat and when we say Jurega Bharat Jitega India, it scares the living daylights out of the BJP and which is why they malign us, which is why they attack us. Because they cannot lay claim to either India or Bharat. Or my Hindi may have to Hongi. Now unke purva chone. Indian independence ki ladai ladi aur na Bharat ki swadhinta ke sangram mein hisse dar bane ye na Bharat ko samajhte hain aur na India ko samajhte hain aur isliye zaruri hai ki hum aur aap inko samjhaye ki Bharat kya hai ki India kya hai I imagine an India and I want to reimagine an India where a man who's a railway police official doesn't pick out his gun and shoot three people by calling out their names because they belong to another community and that happened a month back in a train that was going from Jaipur to Mumbai. I imagine an India where in, in a school in Uttar Pradesh, a teacher does not single out an eight-year-old student and gets his classmates to slap him and calls out his religion. I imagine an India where the young and the restless can ask questions and seek accountability from those in power. That's the India I imagine. I imagine an India where people in Ladakh, they don't say, we have been let down by our government. Our prime minister is lying because the territory has changed. That's the India I imagine. I imagine an India where, where people who are elected to power are accountable, where media can speak truth to power, where you and I can raise our questions. Forget about me being from the Congress or having been in the media. I am an Indian. And I wish to ask questions of my democratically elected government. I don't want an India where 6,000 crore worth of advertisement money is going to shut up large sections of the media and it will completely absolve the Prime Minister of any responsibility.
That's, that's the India I want. And that's the India I strive to achieve. I strive to achieve that India because you and I together will bring hope to this country. You and I together will reimagine the India that our forefathers laid down their lives for. You and I will together claim the India back from the fascists, from the authoritarian regime because this is the India that our founding fathers thought of when they built this constitution. And I will just spend a minute and then wrap up because I want to speak about the constitution. We are all practicing Hindus and Muslims and Christians and Sikhs and various other religions in this country. But if there is one text that is more sacred than any other text in this country, that's the Constitution of India. Because that Constitution of India guarantees every Indian citizen the right to life and liberty. It guarantees you the power to speak truth to those in government. It guarantees you that you and the richest Indian will be equal before law. It guarantees, irrespective of caste, creed, color, sex, region, religion, language, the right to vote. No matter who you are, you can be the most famous, you can be the most powerful, you can be the richest Indian. You only have one right to vote. And that's the constitution of India that we have to fight for collectively. We have to reclaim it from the fascists because that's the India that was imagined for us and that's the India we need to strive together to reimagine. Thank you very much.